Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have a definite integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of 1 plus 4 cotangent x over 4 minus cotangent x dx. So if you want to give this problem a try on your own first, then go ahead and pause the video. A couple things I was thinking when I first looked at it was, you know, I don't see the purpose of these cotangents in the sense that there's no nice identity or something I can work with just now. So I'd feel a lot more comfortable if I was only in sines and cosines, and most of the time that's a good move to make, okay? So let's go ahead, rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. So I'm gonna have integral from pi over four to pi over two. And then in the numerator, I'm gonna have one plus this is 4 cosine of x divided by sine x. And in the denominator, we'll have 4 minus cosine x over sine x dx. And then right now, what we have is a complex fraction because we have a fraction inside of a fraction. And let's try to simplify that. Get rid of the extra denominators. What I want to get rid of is sine x. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of the integrand by sine x and distribute that through now, okay? So what we're gonna have in the next step, limits are still the same, I'm just manipulating with some good old algebra. We're gonna have sine x plus four cosine x, right? Because these sine x's here, they're gonna cancel, cancel. And then in the denominator, I'll have 4 sine x minus cosine x dx. All right, now stare at it for a second. You might be tempted to do a wild variety of things, but if you think back to when I derived <laughs> the antiderivative of secant x, in one of the lecture videos, it was via just a simple u substitution that you might not have immediately noticed. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. If I let the entire denominator be u, I'm going to get back the numerator when I find du. Just watch. So say we let u equal 4 sine x minus cosine x. Then du, the derivative, would be 4 cosine x. Derivative of negative cosine x would be plus sine x dx. Oh me, oh my, that's exactly what we have right here. Which worked out, you know, very fabulously for us. Obviously someone sat there and wrote this problem, so it would be just that nice. Okay, so there's my u. This is du, and then we need, we need to change our limits of integration as soon as we make the u sub. So let's figure out what they're gonna be. Currently, pi over four and pi over two are limits for x. So I need to plug them in for x and see what they'll be in terms of u. So u of pi over four equals four times sine of pi over four is rad two over two minus cosine of pi over four is also rad two over two. So 4 times rad 2 over 2 is 2 rad 2 minus rad 2 over 2. Maybe I should have left it as a common denominator, huh? <laughs> this is going to be 3 rad 2 over 2. That's my new lower limit. And then u of pi over 2 is going to be 4 times sine of pi over 2 is 1 minus cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this is just going to be 4. So now we can rewrite our new integral. All in terms of u, the limits are going to go from 3 rad 2 over 2 to 4. This sine x plus 4 cosine x dx, that's du, all of that, over u. That's it. We have du over u. Wow, things cleaned up dramatically. Okay. Antiderivative of 1 over u, hopefully you know that. Yes, it's going to be natural log, absolute value of u. And then this gets evaluated from 3 rad 2 over 2 to 4. You have to put the absolute value 
as long as there's a variable that could possibly make the argument negative for the natural log, you can drop them once you plug in the limits and you can see that, okay, they're already positive values, okay? But at this step, you can't drop them just yet. So now let's see, we're gonna have natural log of four minus natural log of three rad two over two. I'm gonna unrationalize that if you don't mind. That's the same as three over rad two. And then using log properties, I can combine these into a single logarithm. So this is natural log four divided by three over rad two. And then the rad two can flip up to the numerator, can't it? Yes, it can, Professor V. So this is natural log for rad two over three. And that's it, that's your answer. Okay, so that concludes the integral. This one was just one of those like sneaky little ones that had some magical U sub that you had to just notice, okay? If that U sub hadn't worked, a couple other things I would have maybe tried are multiplying by a conjugate and trying to work with some identities. Sometimes that's helpful. But there wasn't really much else to do because you see none of these trig functions were squared, so I didn't have any identities right off the hand to play with, and it just coincidentally worked out. So I hope you enjoyed that integral of the day. If you want more integration fun, there's a whole playlist. I have like over 100 videos of just me doing integrals of the day. You can also watch full length lecture videos if you need any help with your calculus classes or pre-calc or trig or even statistics. I have all of that. So subscribe if you're not subscribed already, if you're new to my channel and give the video a thumbs up, please. Leave me a comment down below. How did you like this integral? Did you not like the trick? Did it make you a little bit angry? I can appreciate that. And please follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. Love you all. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.